Okay guys, so one thing I forgot to talk about during one, some of our last videos was how to do an ice table. And that is technically part, or um, I guess this problem that, I, that I've uh, made for you guys here is part of lab 4 um, because it has to do with KC values. Okay, so let's go through this problem. We essentially have this um, iron molecule, uh, this iron 3 plus molecule, ion to be, to be technical, with a uh, SCN molecule becoming FESCN, which, if you remember from one of our labs, um, is a uh, colored ion. So, the in we're given our initial concentration of the iron ion and the initial concentration of the SCN ion, and we are told what our FESCN is at equilibrium. So, from this, we have to calculate the KC constant. So, let's go ahead and try to do this. Um, so, to do this, we need to go ahead and start off by making an ice table. So, if you're not familiar with ice tables, the ice part of it stands for initial, change, and end, or final, um, or equilibrium, sorry. Okay, and so we make one for each one of our molecules, so we have Fe ion, we have our SCN ion, and we have our FESCN. Okay, so from this, we can then go ahead and make an ice table. Going back to our problem, um, we will see that we have an equilibrium reaction. Um, so we go ahead and start off with this equilibrium reaction. And so we have 9 times 10 to the negative fifth molar for our starting iron concentration. For our starting SCN concentration, we have 1.2 times 10 to the negative third. So we plug that in, and it's kind of not really in line, so I guess I'll try redoing that. Um, but the main idea is that, you know, it's that it's there. So, okay, so we have 1.2 times 10 to the negative 3. And for FESCN, we have, um, well, before we mix our reactants, we are going to have no FESCN. So this is kind of when they're both sitting in their little beakers before you mix them. So there's absolutely no product um, at this point in time. Um, so, now what is going to happen? Obviously we cannot subtract anything from our product side because you can't go below zero. So we are going to be subtracting one molecule from each one of these and for each one that we subtract we're going to get one FESCN. Now obviously that's going to depend on your reaction. So in our reaction because we only need one Fe uh, and I'll designate that right here, one Fe for every and one SCN to make one FESCN. But if that was not the case then you would have uh, like for example minus 2x. Okay, so what are our equilibrium concentrations at this point? So to do that, we just have to add these two together. So we get 9 times 10 to the negative fifth minus x for the equilibrium concentration of iron. We get 1.2 times 10 to the negative third minus x for SCN. And we're just bringing that number down and then adding it to this negative x. So that's how we get um, this minus x. And for FESCN, we are just going to simply have X. Okay, it's a little skewed, but I think you guys get the point. Um, all right, so now how do we calculate what our, what our uh, equilibrium constant is? Well, we can go ahead and set this equal to K, but first we're going to have to solve for how much of this do we have left. So we know that essentially K, and maybe I'll make this a different color, so we have K is equal to our products, or FESCN, over the concentration of our reactants, Fe, and I'm not going to write the charges, but you should write the charges, I'm just doing that to save time. Um, okay, and so we know that this is equal to, essentially, we take our 
our products, so x over, and we plug in these other guys as well. So I'm just going to call that, I'm just going to call this whole guy A and this whole guy B, so over A times B. Okay, and let's then go ahead and finish this problem off. So, now how can we tell what are, what any of these variables are? Well, we do know that at uh, equilibrium we have our concentration of FESCN, which if we go back to our ice table is X. So, we can essentially replace all of our X's with 4.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. That's because at equilibrium this is equal to 4.5 times 10 to the negative fifth at equilibrium. So that then, because it's equal to that at equilibrium, becomes our X value. So then this is just going to simply be, um, and we just plug in 4.5 times 10 to the negative fifth for all of our X's. So we would plug that in there and in here, and then we would just go ahead and be essentially left with a bunch of numbers is equal to k. So if you solve that problem out, you get k is equal to, um, and I guess I can just go ahead and substitute these values in, so uh, the concentration from our equilibrium, or x, remember was 4.5 times 10 to the negative fifth, so we get 4.5 times 10 to the negative fifth on the top, and I would recommend that you use units at all times, but like I said, just to save time, I'm, I'm skipping that part now, um, times 9 times 10 to the negative fifth minus 4.5 times 10 to the negative fifth times um, 1.2 times 10 to the negative third minus 4.5 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, you work all of that out and you get that k is essentially equal to 866. And that is our problem uh, for using ice tables. Now, we can also use a, a similar concept to do solubility charts. So we know that, for example, solubility, or KSP, is essentially going to be equal to products over reactants. However, when dealing with solubility, you do not count the solids. So, if we have an equation, we'll just call it molecule A, which is a solid, um, becomes molecule, um, well, let's, let's call it molecule AB, which is a solid, becomes molecule A, which is an aqueous solution, and molecule B, which is also an aqueous solution, and of course they'll be charged. Um, but how do we go ahead and find the concentration of these in water? So if we know that KSP is, let's say, equal to 5 times 10 to the negative 13th, we know that then KSP has to be equal to products, which, remember, you only count the aqueous solution problems, uh, which would be the concentration of A times the concentration of B divided by the reactants, but there are no solids, so we just leave it as 1. So essentially we get 5 times 10 to the negative 13th, is equal to the concentration of A times the concentration of B, which if we do an ice table we get minus X, min or I'm sorry, plus X and plus X and minus X because we started with only um, AB as a solid. So what will we be left with is essentially X squared. So we take these X's and replace them into their respective um, ions and concentrations. So this essentially becomes our equation that 5 times 10 to the negative 13th is equal to x squared. So therefore x is essentially the square root of 5 times 10 to the negative 13th and that is your solubility problem.